to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos.
We bless you. We bless you. We bless you for being in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll just take about 10 minutes to really appreciate God. I want us to start this year with a depth of thanksgiving for just one thing. We cannot begin to count the miracles and the mighty things that God did, but just one thing. The Bible says, He went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed, for God was with him. Just one scripture, John 3. John 3, verse 2. We're going to thank God for his presence. John 3. It's an incredible year, but we need to give God thanks. Hallelujah. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know who thou art. A teacher come from God. Read the remaining part. One to go. For no man can do these miracles except God be with him. No ministry can make an impact like this except God be with them. Jesus told them that no kingdom divided against itself shall stand. Hallelujah. He said, how can Beelzebub cast Beelzebub? But he said, if I by the finger of God Doeth these things. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word, not their word, the word with signs following. Hallelujah. I like us as a family of faith to just thank God for 2013. We cannot begin to count the mighty things. The revelation, access to truth. The supernatural way that God brought people to this place. Don't take it for granted. Bless him. What he did for your family, the healings, the miracles, the salvations, the transformations. Bless him. Inside and outside, no matter how far you are, make sure you are giving him praise. Thank you. Thank you, we have no right to expect anything for 2014 if we are not grateful for what he has done for us. We give you praise for your word, for divine help. He said, If the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say. Thank you, Jesus. For the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of our praise we magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of our praise we magnify your name for the things from the depths of your heart for the things you have done the battles you have won only you are worthy of our praise we magnify your name just lift up your voice and say Lord thank you for your presence that's the greatest asset we have Beyond anointing, beyond skills, beyond revelation, we thank you for your presence. I've said it again, men can fake power, but you cannot fake the presence of God. 
Make sure you are praying. Let there be a song of praise in your heart. Sing praises, declare. Lord, thank you. I want you to take a quick look at January, February 2013. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. For preservation, we say thank you. For wisdom, we say thank you. For protection, for security, for prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to thank him for this year, 2014. Because I'm telling you, he says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house. And when I'm talking about that house, I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about you, the glory, the glory of my life. Oh, yeah. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I know the power of the Lord is risen upon me. Greater glory. I see the glory of the Lord. I'd like you to see a new dimension in your life. I'd like you to see a new level the of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the glory of the Lord. I see the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. So I rise and shine. Rise My light shine. has come. wonders this year. I believe it. Hallelujah. 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 Just one scripture before we sit down. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Hallelujah. The Bible says, it shall come to pass in that day. Not this scripture, and I'm just quoting something else. He said, the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted above all other mountains. And as a result, all nations will flow. Hallelujah. Amos 3 verse 3. Can we read one to read? Answer the question. This is a question the Lord is asking you this year. Can two walk together? In other words, are you ready to move at my pace? We can't walk together if you do not agree with me. There are many things that the Spirit of God wants to communicate. But he said, can two walk together? I want to walk with you. There are great things. Jesus speaking said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He said, how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come? He said, he will guide you in all truth. He will take up the things that are mine and he will show unto you. And so God, the first question God is asking us in 2014 
is that can we work together this year? Because you argued with God last year. The Bible says they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible began to speak to us about the Sabbath, the rest of God. He said they perished in the wilderness. They perished in the wilderness. Because when the word of the Lord came, they doubted, can God make a table? Where will he get the materials to make the table? And the Bible says they limited God. And God in his anger swore that they shall not enter my rest. And the Bible says there remained this same rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, there remained this rest. He said, let it be that today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation in the wilderness. They limited God. There remained a rest. There is a Sabbath. There is a seventh day that the Lord wants to initiate his people. He wants to bring them out of somewhere. I want you to believe what I'm saying. And the scripture the Lord says I should ask us is, can two walk together? Not you and your friend. Can you walk together with the Holy Spirit this year? To say, I may not understand how you will do this. But I know you will do it. walk together. Will you finally agree with the Holy Ghost that he can take you from where you are? Will you finally agree with the Holy Spirit and say Lord this year I'm not an unbeliever. I refuse to debate and argue whether I understand. Listen, this is the year you will keep aside the, the, the limitation that comes from logic and intellectualism. Hallelujah. To say, Lord, show me how one plus one will become ten. It's irrelevant. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. one question the Lord is asking. Is there anything too hard for me to do? God this year help me sound here please I want you to believe believe that God is able hallelujah if you can answer this question tonight then God is set to get the ball rolling see especially for those of you outside I hope you are following don't let anything limit you many of us last year were just spectators just debating can God really do this? Can God really do that? There are some of us who are coming here for the first time. You've heard about the things. Let me tell you, your unbelief, the Bible says, shall their unbelief make the faith of God of non-effect. That means your unbelief will not stop God from being God, but it will stop you from entering that new level. So can two walk together? Can two walk together? I'd like you to pray one prayer and say, Lord, I'm ready to walk with you. I believe you inside and outside. No matter how far you are, make sure you are praying. Don't be distracted. Lord, this is the year that I'm a believer. Logic will not stand my way. The challenges and failures of last year will not stand my way. I don't want to be a fool. I believe you. I choose to walk with you. I choose to walk with you.
Haleluya. 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 Let me tell you something. I must let you know that our yearly prophetic words are not just a mimicking of what churches do. Hallelujah. I've made it a culture for years. While many people are celebrating their Christmas, laughing and enjoying, I'm traveling with the Lord, finding out what the word of God is. I, I need you to know that we respect God and we honor God. When you see us bring words like this, trust me, God spoke to us. Hallelujah. The Bible says that which I tell you in the secret place, declare thou on the mountaintop. So it's not just some way, okay, December 31st, what do we do? No, no. Hallelujah. You don't need to be in 2014 to manifest as light or to have dominion. It has nothing to do with 2014. Hallelujah. When you believe the reality of God, you walk as light and dominion. But it's always been our culture as a ministry. See, let me tell you. The secret of the hand of God upon our lives is we always find out what God is doing globally. And we plunge into the global frequency of the spirit. Not just what God is doing across territories. It's always our culture to find out what are you doing. The Bible says there were certain men called the sons of Issachar. They took time to understand the times. He said he made light to signify times and seasons. Hallelujah. And so it's our, it's our job to be able to... There are many people who preach that at the end of the year into the new year is irrelevant. You go and read the Bible why he made stars to signify times and seasons. As far as the earth realm is concerned, it functions with times and seasons. Eternity does not work with time. But the earth realm is bounded by time. That's why the prophets will speak and say, according to the time of life. The Bible will say, in the seventh year of the fifth month, of this and that, God did this. God is a God of prophetic timing. Hallelujah. And so I need you to understand that in this season, there are certain things that God is doing across the earth. There are certain things God is doing in the continent of Africa. There are certain things he's doing in the nation of Nigeria. And there is a role we have to play. It is this role that is encapsulated in our theme for the year. This is why many ministries have different things that God told them. Hallelujah. And so the first revelation about a prophetic word is that it shows you God's expectation for you for the year. It's not just about receiving. It's an indication of responsibility. That there is a role that you have to play. Oh, I sense the presence of God so strong. Mighty, mighty, mighty. There is a role you have to play. Are you following me now? And there are blessings that are attached when you diligently follow that role. We are not confused at all. I was telling the leaders during our meeting. And I told them that this is not the kind of ministry that is always doing new things every year. All we are concerned about, I prayed a prayer and said, Lord, I don't want fame. All I want is impact. Impact upon the body of Christ. Many arm robbers in Nigeria were famous for causing catastrophe. Hallelujah. What we want to see is impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. year of light and dominion. This is what the mouth of the Lord has declared and he will bring it to pass. Ours is to believe and to be guided accordingly. And so my job today is to open up the theme and prepare our hearts and watch the things that the Holy Spirit will do. But the question, God asked me this question and he said I should ask the house. Can two walk together? There are no two people that can work together when they disagree. Somebody must succumb to another person's will. Is that true? So, this is not the year you will expect God to dance to your tune. This is the year you will die and let him have his way. And then you will see the wonder-working power 
of this God that we serve. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. Please hug everyone around you. Happy New Year. Inside and outside, make sure you greet somebody with a great smile and sit down. Let's just get to the word very quickly. Hallelujah. Never forget, it's a year of light and dominion. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for what God, what God is doing in our midst. We give him all the praise for his presence. Moses said, if your presence goeth not with us, do not take us from here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a year of light and dominion. That's what the Lord spoke to us. And I'll be sharing on light. I'll be opening us up to the revelation. What, what is the meaning of this word? Hallelujah. Oftentimes, God communicates his intentions in coded languages and messages. Hallelujah. He would put it and grant grace that that revelation be opened up. When there is an opening of God's word, we can believe and we can walk in that reality. Hallelujah. So what is the meaning of it being the year of light? What does that mean? Just keep the issue of dominion first. What does it mean? What's the light about? Hallelujah. A year of light. There are two dimensions to this prophetic word as being light, a year of light. The first is that God wants us to have light. And the second dimension that is that he wants us to become lights. So he wants us to have, hallelujah, and then he wants us to become. The first dimension is the inner workings of light in and through us. And then the second dimension is what we will become to the world. And, and I'm going to just share very quickly. Hallelujah. So God wants us to have light. You cannot become what you are not. I mean, you cannot reflect what you are not. Is that true? And so he wants us to become. To as many as believe in him, he gave them power to become. He gives you power to become. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 119 verse 130. Psalm 119 verse 130. Please make sure you're writing. What does it mean to have light? What is light? What is God really saying? When he says it's a season, it's a year of light. What is his expectation? What is in the mind of God? Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit can search the mind of God. And make known unto us the accurate intentions and counsel of God. Psalm 119. The entrance of thy words giveth light. And it giveth understanding to the simple. He said the entrance. Can we have other versions? Is that possible? Okay. Uh, let's try New Living Translation. NLT. Puts it beautifully. The teaching of your word gives light. Hallelujah. The teaching of your word gives light. So even the simple, even those who are void of understanding. Hallelujah. The entrance of thy word. Question. 
if you pick up your Bible and read, it didn't say the seeing. It didn't say the speaking. It said the entrance. So, how can what you are reading enter you? This is a mystery. He said, if it does not enter you, it cannot give you light. It can be stored as scripture, but it only becomes light if it enters you. The entrance of thy word giveth light and even understanding to the simple. So what is the revelation behind light? Write it. The first revelation behind light is that light symbolizes supernatural insight into scriptures supernatural insight when God says it's our year of light that means he's granting us unusual access into scripture insight uncommon insight opening us up to understand the hidden mysteries the hidden mysteries that are encoded in scripture now you may ask, why do we need these mysteries? You see, because the Bible says God made many lights. Is that true? But he made one light to rule. So there is a relationship between light and dominion. He said he made two great lights. And that light, although there were many lights, the coming of that light enforced its dominion. It ruled in the day and ruled in the night. So the greater your light, the greater you are able to walk in this authority and dominion. But since that light comes through the word of God, we need insight. Are you following me now? Let's see 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 quickly. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. Second Corinthians 4 verse 6. If you can give us in NLT or the message, anyone that is available. Hallelujah. Please read it. The message. Very interesting. It started when God said, Light up the darkness. And our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Jesus Christ. All bright and beautiful. He said, as we saw and understood. Hallelujah. King James says, God who had commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined in our heart. To bring to us the knowledge of the glory of God as seen on the face of Jesus Christ. So light connotes insight. Depth of insight. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. We really, really need the light of God. Accurate insight into the word of God. Because Jesus Christ was cautioning the people and he said, be careful lest your light be not darkness. That means be careful so that what you are calling light may not really be darkness. Hallelujah. Luke 11, I believe. Luke 11, 35. Let's look at it. Luke 11, 35. Shiba kabra dusibaladabasha. Just give us an um, amplified, amplified, okay, or you can just leave it. It says, take heed, therefore, let's start from 34, 34, the light of the body is the eye, is that true? It says, therefore, when thy eye be single, thy whole body is full of light, but when your eye is evil, your body is full of darkness, 35. It says, be careful, therefore, that the light that's in you is not darkness. There are many people carrying revelations they think is light, but it's darkness. Are you getting me? So God is saying, as you begin to explore the things you are calling light, contend for accurate insight, so that you will not be carrying a revelation that is darkness. Whereas you convince yourself that I have Rema. There, there are all kinds of revelations in the body of Christ. And the Lord is saying, be careful. So that what you keep celebrating because of the flamboyancy, be careful. Let you not be beguiled by darkness. I'm telling you the truth. There are many people carrying darkness around because it sounds good and sounds spiritual. Hallelujah. Because when it is light, 
it should set people free it should deliver people it says the words that i speak unto you they are spirit so this is the year to guard your heart with all diligence and make sure that that which you uphold and absorb in your spirit is light indeed for the bible says it is possible that a man can carry darkness and believe he's holding on to light many people have been holding on to dark theologies dark mindsets dark philosophies for decades many of our family members have held on to teachings that were taught by prophets apostles teachers evangelists they will not let it go and the bible says be careful so that what you are carrying if it's a terrible thing when you are holding darkness and you want that darkness to bring light hallelujah supernatural insight so that god brings us into light indeed hallelujah it's a very painful thing if after many years you find out that what you've held on to and argued all your life was a lie is that true there are many people who have held on to a lot of things the baptism in the holy spirit for instance there are so many people who have held on to all of these theologies there's nothing like that deliverance for instance there are many people who have held on to it oh i'm born again everything is all right but there is darkness in this family and they will not confront it no there's nothing wrong i'm fine until they become acute victims and the bible says be careful so this is the year when you will edit the things that you have kept in your spirit and throw out anything that is not consistent with the word of god no matter how long it will require humility because some of us have argued over darkness for a long time. Hallelujah. Number two, light connotes understanding and comprehension. It's not enough to know. It's not enough to know. You must understand. Job 32 verse 8, Eli who began to speak. And he said, but there is a spirit in man. He said, and the inspiration of the almighty it didn't say gives men knowledge make it men of understanding there is a difference between knowledge knowledge tells you what is available it creates awareness understanding guides you on how to apply it accurately i've always used the example knowledge is that when you want to make jollof rice for instance you need rice you need pepper you that's knowledge understanding tells you when to combine what ingredient where because that you have rice and you have this does not mean you can cook many people have knowledge that puffs up the bible says ever learning but never coming to the comprehension so we have so many spiritual laws around us but we do not understand what principles are responsible for what so we just use any kingdom principle when occasion serves us when you are afraid the nearest thing is the blood of Jesus or Holy Ghost fire or, or the anointing of the Holy Spirit or prayer or agreement, all of these things are spiritual keys. And you understanding is the ability to gain mastery over the operation, the operations of the kingdom. It's not enough to know. It's not enough to know. There is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty can make what you know become understanding he explains to you he opens it up so that you are not confused what makes a doctor a consultant listen listen almost there are many things that a fresh doctor knows or a consultant knows that the fresh doctor knows but he doesn't have understanding praise the lord when when a consultant is carrying out surgery he doesn't bring a special knife is that true it's the same knife the same everything but there is understanding and this is what many of us need to have understanding understanding so that when you see something happening in your family you are not confused you don't panic you know the exact spiritual law to bring into place this is what spiritual maturity is all about hallelujah I've said it again and again. The opposite of fear, in my opinion, is not faith. The opposite of fear is understanding. 
you always fear what you don't understand. There's nobody doubting that the chair you are sitting on now can hold your weight. Is that true? Anything you truly understand, you don't become afraid of it again. A pilot can man an airplane, a big airplane, because he has understanding. And he's not afraid that a tiny man can drive hundreds of people, thousands of feet above sea level because of understanding. Hallelujah. Somebody else can sit on that plane and say, I believe we will not die. That you were not afraid and you died courageously does not mean, are you getting my point now? It's not about dying courageously, it's about not dying. Because at that point, you are flying people. The plane is nose diving and you are saying, I know, <laughs> we will arrive. Nobody should be still in this plane. You are falling. Get understanding. Hallelujah. Get understanding. Number three. Light brings direction. And every time there is direction, there is an end to confusion direction psalm 119 verse 105 are you getting blessed tonight so that we don't just say light 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 direction the reason why many people run to prophets and apostles and people around is direction people want direction in every area of their life direction people go to herbalists because they want direction what is wrong in our family and what is the way out direction so when god says it's a year of light it means that there is an unusual grace to bring accurate direction to your life hallelujah it says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path a lamp to my feet a light to my path that means an end comes to confusion because he will begin to let me see the bible says you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way not these are the ways choose this is the way walk here in it and he said you will find rest for your soul many of us are trusting god what job to do many of us are trusting god where to settle down all kinds of things many of us are trusting our family members are confused what business to do? What can I do? Everybody is asking questions this year. If you believe God, God is saying, I will come to you. You will hear my voice in the night. God will just come and bring direction. Direction that you've been waiting for years. God will say, this is it. Walk in it. Wise men saw the star from the east. And it began, they began to follow that light. Until they arrived at where Jesus was. No confusion. They followed the light. For as long as they kept looking at the light, it kept directing them until it settled. May the Lord take the light and drop where your destiny needs to go and that you will just follow that light into unending levels of blessings and success. Light. Oh, how we need direction. How we need direction. Hallelujah. Somebody just gets up and feels like you want to go to Saminaka. You see, there is nothing as terrible as being in a place where God is not. Because he's not committed to defend you. Hallelujah. Psalm 43 verse 3. Very interesting scripture. Direction. Hallelujah. Where we are today by the grace of God as a ministry... Is a product of divine direction. The ability to hear God. A lot of people say, I can be anywhere and I will succeed. Try it. The Bible says, whatsoever he does prospers. Whatsoever he does prospers because it is directed. I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wished. As I was commanded. Hallelujah. Oh, send out thy light and thy truth let them lead me let them bring me onto your holy hill and onto your tabernacle let your light lead me this must be your prayer send your light 
Hallelujah. Send your light. Let your light lead me. Light means life. L-I-F-E. Connotes life. John 8, 12. If we can have it in the Amplified. John 8, 12. Very powerful scripture. I'm telling you all of the things that are encapsulated in this word light. John 8, 12. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in darkness, but will have the light which is. There is revelation that you have that will translate into the quality of your life. Are you getting my point? It says that this light this year can bring life to you. They are life to those who find them and health. That means the revelation you get can be what will be responsible for divine health. So that it's no longer an issue of guesswork. Hallelujah. Light. The light you have can put you in command of unbelievable realms of wealth and prosperity and it can add to the quality of your life. One department came to meet me and we were interacting with them and my heart broke so much. I was talking with them and just asking them their expectations for the year and what they want God to do for their life and family. I think almost everyone, their, their requests were just, or their expectations, intimacy with God and financial breakthrough for my family. There are many families that need the mercy of God. Is that true? It's easy for everybody to wear suit and come and sit down and laugh. But the Bible says, if you follow me, you will get light that will translate into life. Prosperity is a formula. It's not guesswork. It is specific. It is exact. And this is the year that you will know it for yourself. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we are unapologetic about wealth and prosperity. I'm not one of those many preachers that say, no, there's no problem. Just seek God. No. We believe. John Wesley said, any religion that does not cater for the economic well-being of the people is an irresponsible religion. We don't want people coming to worship and bow down and cry only to get up and go into prostitution and armed robbery and occultism because of lack. We don't want to hear that our parents are moving out Landlords are kicking them out of the house and every kind of thing happening. When you are blessed, it gives you options and you can choose to serve God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many people who, get, who want to get married. For years they've been trusting God but there's no money. It's a terrible thing. Many of our family members want to do a lot of things. There are many of our family members, our parents are almost 60, 70 years. They cannot boast of one good house. Not even a good car to help them. It's not, it's, it's an anomaly. But this year we will change it by the power of the light of God. Remember God asked you a question, can two walk together? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Light also means showing forth. Ah, this is the part I love. Light connotes a display, a revelation, a manifestation, an unveiling. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise, shine. Not because you have entered a new year. Arise, shine because your light has finally arrived. That revelation, amplified please. Can we see it? Isaiah 60 verse 1. Amplified puts it in a beautiful way. Arise from the depression and prostration which circumstances have kept you. It says rise to a new life. 
this is a prophecy for somebody he said arise this is a prophecy for a family arise from the depression this degradation that circumstances have kept you he said rise to a new life he says shine be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light has come arise this is what many of us will be telling our family members i tell you this year this year, some of you will single-handedly go home and just gather your family members and say, salvation has come. What is wrong? What needs to be done in this family? Saviors, the Bible says, shall come out of Zion. It's time, this is the year your Christianity will have practical evidence to your loved ones. Don't blame them for going to harbor list until you can prove that there is a superior government that reigns on the earth. Don't blame them for going to witch doctors. Are you getting my point? Don't blame them for traveling around. We keep criticizing people rather than contending to deliver what is authentic. Let me tell you something. I showed the welfare department. Yeah, that was the department that came to see me. I showed them a video. Pastor Jakes called me and said, Josh, you need to see an incredible video. I said, really? What's the video? And he showed me the link. I I'm sure some of you have heard it. About a lake that just appeared in the east there was an explosion and the lake just appeared and muddy lake but it seemingly had the power to heal people thousands of people at once they went there no protocol no welfare no suit nobody called apostle people were coming from all over men you can keep criticizing human beings are too desperate to listen to you if you cannot bring the authentic light stop wasting your time are you getting my point watch the video and see people almost naked they were videotaping them they were bathing in the muddy water that's because we men of god have failed them we can stand and brag and make noise and they will listen to us immediately they finish they will travel and continue people were cutting the tree they were cutting the tree in the river just to take home paradventure it will be responsible for healing and prosperity and all of them, most of the people there said it has to be Jesus. How are you going to tell them this thing is demonic? When they sat down in your assembly for years and nothing happened. Are you getting my point? Let me tell you something. People are more desperate than ever. No rema. There was no man of God that came to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. The people were not daft. They came from all over. They were to an extent, brothers and sisters, that they were digging into the ground. And when they saw water, they just fetched it. People made money selling jerry cans, selling suya, selling, you know, the bike people. The bike people, they were interviewed and they were happy. They said, this has to be God. We've never had it this good. They said, do you plan for this water to stop? Say, why? No. Why? This is prosperity. I mean, ah. We are very unapologetic about the fact that it is God's desire to bless you. Prosperity does not take people to hell. It's materialism that takes people to hell. And materialism is not having materials. Materialism is the influence of what you have on your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Lazarus went to heaven with his poverty. Abraham with his prosperity is still in heaven. It was not too much money or lack of money that took them many of the requests of our family members for some of us the whole request of our family members what can bring peace in our entire family is not more than hundred thousand and then they go to a herbalist and give him twenty thousand and it doesn't work they now go and borrow fifty thousand and give him because they are looking for solution may you be that light this year in the name of the lord jesus christ we arise and shine, our light is come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. We arise and shine, our light is come. See the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Insight, understanding, direction, 
life is showing forth. The Bible says that we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We, we should show forth. Comes from the Greek word doxazo. A display of the decree of a king's splendor. Hallelujah. It was the custom of kings in ancient times that when they achieved certain feats, they will call people to come and celebrate with them. This was the case with King Ahasuerus. And so he brought them to come and see his provinces. This year, may the Lord make you an object of praise. That he will use you as a testament of what he can do with a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have all of this, then you can now become the light. You can now become the light. What does it mean to become the light? It means to become a standard. It means it, it, to become a pattern. To become a reference. Hallelujah. That when they are looking for a genuine, authentic Christian, you can be a reference. Matthew 5, from verse 14 to 16. Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. The Bible says, you are the light. Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. The light of this system, cosmos. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That means whatever has covered your light this year must give way. You are a city set on a hill and cannot be hidden. Verse 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. He said, but on a lampstand and it will give light. Because of you, many people, you will be like the ark of Noah that incorporated. There are people who are not even born again, but because of your presence, the, the, the span of your light will cover certain people. There are many of our loved ones that need us. Without us, they may die. And the Bible says it gives life to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let, permit your light. Let it so shine. Before who? Not before trees. God wants your light. That which he has made you become. He wants it to shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your father in heaven. Hallelujah. So as an individual, you will become a standard this year. That you will be a portrait of a balanced Christian. Holy, prosperous, healthy. Genesis 24 verse 1. It says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed him in all things. All things. All things. This is the year we will contend for every part of our life to look like the image of the Christ. Hallelujah. You must contend. Not that you'll be prosperous and be sickly. Not that you'll be healthy. No, no. Every area of your life. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your, your father in heaven. As a ministry, this is our prophetic destiny. The standard. Isaiah 49 verse 6. Oh, I believe this with all my heart. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your throne and the earth will hear. Send your word from your throne and the earth will hear my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god take my praise oh god Take my praise, Lord, my worship is calling you, 
God gave me this specific word. I shared it with the leaders. This is what God is going to be doing with us. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. This is what we have been doing. To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. But this is the new mandate. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. It says that thou mayest be my salvation, not bring it, be it. You will become a representation of my salvation even to the ends of the earth. It says you have been faithful raising people, training people, building people. I now measure a thousand cubits and I increase capacity. It said I will also, in addition to what you are doing, I will give you as a light. I will give you as a light unto the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what God is going to do this year. And then he will bring us through this light into a realm of dominion. Rulership. Let me show you one very powerful scripture. Zechariah 1.21 Dominion means absolute control. It means rulership. Sovereign authority. The ability to be in charge and to be in control. Hallelujah. This dominion is not just dominion over men. But dominion over first the forces of darkness. Are you getting my point? Then said I, what come this to do? Amplify it, please. Can we have amplified? Then said I, what are these horns and smiths coming to do? And he said, these are the horns or powers that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. There are horns that have stopped families from laughing. There are horns that have kept people down. He said, so that no man lift up his head. There are families and destinies where no man has been able to lift up his head. No marriage, no joy, no prosperity, no increase. Their spiritual lives dead. He said, but these smiths or workmen have come to terrorize them. These are the carpenters that God is sending. Hallelujah. It says they have come to terrorize, to cause them to be panic stricken, to cast out the horns or powers of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah. This is the year you will see the practical displacing of Satan. It will be a contention of light over darkness. Once and for all, the devil will give up over your life and your family. Please believe it. Please believe it. This is what dominion is all about. It's not about being commander-in-chief and telling people, come and clean my chair. This is foolishness. Dominion is the ability to be a light. Hallelujah. He said, those in Nephtha and Zebulun have seen a great light. A great light has come to them. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. So there are horns. Remember our teaching, give me this mountain. Brothers and sisters, upon every mountain there are giants. There is a spiritual dimension to this life. Hallelujah. People do not just sit, just succeed or, or experience breakthroughs and increase. But this year, by the grace of God, we will arise because our light has come. 
and we will compel darkness to bow. And all of these horns that have terrorized people and families, they will give way. One scripture, Psalm 1110. Psalm 110, sorry, 110, verse 2. A popular scripture. We'll read it together. 110, verse 2. Let's read, it's projected. It says, the Lord shall send the rod. What is that rod? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. That rod is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. He said, the Lord will send a dimension of the Holy Spirit that will open men to light. And on account of that, he said, rule thou. Not in their absence, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Many of you, your parents have not gone to the village for years because they know when they go, they will die. You are the one who will go and say, let me see the devil. Rule thou. Rule thou. This is the year you speak to somebody and say in the name of Jesus, let that barrenness be over and it leaves at once. This is the year somebody will come and lie down on your bed and get filled with the Holy Spirit and just get up born again filled with the Holy Spirit somebody takes tea in your house and goes back and unending breakthroughs because they just contacted light the Bible says the light shines in darkness rule thou the Lord will send the rod out of Zion see let me tell you your blessing is not authentic until your family members participate in it this selfish Christianity of chop alone, where it, it, the, the kingdom doesn't work that way. As for me and my... Hallelujah. I went home and I saw dramatic levels of breakthrough in my house. I said, that's right. This is exactly how it should be. Hallelujah. The devil will be under your feet. Hallelujah. This is why we are teaching because the Bible says we should do this. But Hebrews chapter 2 tells us that we do not yet see all things. Remember our scripture? Let's look at it. Hebrews 2. Verse 6 to 8. That's why we need light to enforce our dominion. Hebrews 2. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? 7. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and crowneth him with glory and honor thou didst set him over how many all the works of your hands that means nobody can use what was created to do enchantment against me the bible says i've been given authority how can a man use stone or use goat or animal and then make incantations i pity the man that will call my name in a shrine this is the year it will catch fire both the herbalist the person who brought it the Bible says Dagon fell. Dagon fell in the Bible. He has given him authority over all the works. All the works. Hallelujah. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet, he left nothing that is not put under him. But this is a dilemma. I said, but now we do not yet see all things are you seeing why light is important without light there's no dominion you can claim it but it may not work it says the reality now so it speaks to us about god's perspective that this is what has been done but right now today we do not yet see all things under his feet but when light comes it will grant us access to rule in the day and to rule in the night hallelujah you believe this these are the mighty things that god is going to do nigeria the lord revealed a few things to me i'm not a prophet but god speaks to me 
And the Bible says, that which I tell you in the secret place, declare thou on the mountain top. We need to pray for our government. I saw a lot of political chaos. In fact, a lot of chaos. Hallelujah. We need to pray a lot of chaos. We need to pray for the president that his life be preserved. Hallelujah. And then the Lord showed me I saw another terrorist group that is even greater than Goko Haram. Hallelujah. And they will begin to be pronounced again and again and this is the wickedness that the devil wants to bring this will not just be nigeria across the entire sub-saharan africa because it's an agenda there is only one resistance to all of this god hallelujah praise the lord i saw so many things i told you last year or uh, in 2007, the Lord told me, if you can remember, I said an economic recession was going to come and hit the world in a very great way. That was when I began to talk of massive kingdom wealth transfer. In 2008, I said, this is the year. And when it happened, I said again that this is the first one. Another one is coming. And the Lord told me this year, the economic recession will hit again for the second time. You can't pray against it. You can only exempt yourself. It's a written judgment. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. Very chaotic. It will humble the government of nations. Hallelujah. It will humble people a lot. Nigeria is going to begin to come to the lamb light. Especially in terms of economics. Last year I said that Nigeria was going to lead Africa in terms of economic empowerment. Go and read the newspaper. It has happened with over about 400 billion or so ahead of South Africa. This is happening. God himself is bringing all of this. And there will be such a manifestation of deliverance in Nigeria this year. This thing called deliverance. You will see it in dramatic ways. It will no longer just be in churches because of light and enlightenment. Hallelujah deliverance it will look like an object of mockery but don't you criticize it because it's the, the preparing ground for the birthing of something powerful i told you about ghana south africa and nigeria nigeria is going to is going to do a lot of mighty mighty exploits this year forget about all the stories that people are saying god is faithful hallelujah i also see that the Lord revealed to me a number of things. We have to pray against death for many, not families here, but generally in the country. We have to pray against death. Hallelujah. And I saw one of the things that the enemy is doing is infecting people with incurable diseases. This one is no longer just, hallelujah, diseases that medical science may not even be able to detect you just see people just dying hallelujah i don't know when it will happen but i'll keep announcing it i saw the death of somebody who was once a president in this country hallelujah i had seen this two years ago i was there in a vision I saw his obituary and every new year God keeps reminding me I honestly don't know when it will happen but let's watch and see hallelujah and God is going to be doing great things this year we will experience levels of financial prosperity write it write it please write it i'm not just talking write it 
is one of the things God specifically told me. Specifically. If you don't believe it, no problem. You can believe the other things that we have. But yes, there will be an avalanche of wealth and prosperity. Praise the Lord. We need to pray against death. I saw a lot of ABU lecturers dying. A lot of ABU lecturers dying. This thing started last year. I began to caution this thing. A lot of ABU lecturers, especially professors. We need to pray because it's a demonic thing. It's not just normal. No. It's a very demonic thing. I saw a lot of academic exploits too this year. A lot of mighty academic exploits. Please believe me. Believe me. Recovery, restoration for people. Especially people who have been praying. I want us to pray so I'll just hurry up. I'm just, I don't want to forget anything. Marriages, miracle, mighty, mighty marriages. I saw this one. It was so much I was surprised. Honestly, I saw marriages I was scared. Trust me. We will all live to see it. I don't mean here, Koinonia. Mighty, mighty marriages. Yes. How could I have skipped it? I saw a lot of marriages. Including those who did not even plan it. Yes, I saw surprises. Except, except, look, let me tell you, thank God we'll all be alive to see it. You will see people who did not, it was not part of their goal in January. But the hand of God will move. Just leave God to do what he wants to do. It's a year of light and dominion. That's why God said, can two walk together? Listen, listen. And this is the scripture the Lord told me. When Abraham took Isaac for sacrifice, there was no lamb yet. But he said, just go Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. And the Bible says, listen, when the obedience of Abraham was tested, he said, just go across. There is a lamb. On the second time, when Jesus needed to enter the city, he said, go to a city called Straight. You will see a coat that no man had ridden on it. Tell them the master has need of it. Believe it. I love saying things before they come to pass. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we will experience levels of expansion and impact. I saw it a lot. Levels of expansion. I saw a lot of people getting blessed from Niger, Niger Republic. I don't know what it is about that place, but I saw so many people from the teachings, Niger Republic. So blessed. I mean, it was a wildfire. It was causing a wildfire, especially among the young people. Hallelujah. So many other miraculous things that the Lord showed me. We will discuss it as we come, as, as the year. Um, another, oh, I remember, I must say it. I saw something that shocked me. Well, let me just say it. Still about prosperity. I was taken in a vision and I remember... I was standing in front of this church. This, the, the Equa church. And I looked and I saw an array of cars. In my mind, listen, listen. In my mind, I was saying, uh -uh. a lot of cars right from that place down. And I was, I was, I was wondering. I said, Lord, what is all this one again? This is amazing. This is what you are going to do for families and for people. And many of them will be gifts. It will not be something that someone will buy. Gifts. Gifts. I believe 
I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. Lord, I of dramatic manifestations of miracles, signs, wonders in a scale that will shock you. Families, I saw a lot of unbelievers. I saw a lot of Muslims coming here. I saw a lot of some of our family members that vowed that they will never come here. You watch them by themselves. You don't need to by themselves. The mighty things that God will do. Mighty things. Mighty things. In the rain, in the sun. Hallelujah. These great things that God will do. Hallelujah. Do you believe these things I'm sharing? Hallelujah. God will do this. For the glory of his name. Praise the Lord. I wanted to say it to him personally, but Bishop, I saw you driving a Camry. Write it. Brown Camry. I've been struggling to tell him. God will bring a lot of prosperity, even in the house. You know, we had been planning for just one bus. You will be amazed to see what God will do this year. Amazed. Amazed. Not just because of Project 10,000. Hallelujah. See, the Bible says, when Jesus was born, some people saw the light and they started coming with their gifts. They came with gold. They came with frankincense. They came with myrrh. And the Bible says they started looking for that star. Nothing would deter them until they found the baby and they began to drop the gift. Watch out and see dramatic manifestations. People would just be sleeping and God would just wake them and say, come and bless the house of God. Come and bless the work of God. Hallelujah. And I saw this spilling over to many families. Even restoration, restoration, supernatural restoration. Hallelujah. Very quickly, so we'll pray. A few resolutions that I want you to adopt this year. A few resolutions. You need to make up your mind on some things. It's not enough to shout amen. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies that have been spoken unto you. So when prophecy comes... The Bible says a virgin will bear a son. It never said Mary. Mary made herself available. Huh? The Bible tells us someone was going to betray him, Jesus. He never called Judas. Judas aligned with that prophecy. Prophecy is like rain. If you bring a bucket, you will get water. Hallelujah. Number one. You must have a childlike heart of a learner. This year, 2011, you must increase your passion for insight. You must increase your passion. And this requires meekness and teachability. This is the year you throw away arrogance, MOG, MO, whatever. Just throw it away and humble yourself. Hallelujah. When it was time for Jesus to give them bread, he said, tell the people to sit down on the grass. That means if you are too big to sit down, no bread for you. He said, if you are interested in eating bread, sit down. Hallelujah. He says, one thing is needful. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But this one thing is needful, to sit. Not to stand and be staring at the master, to sit. 
a position that puts you in ancient times when a rabbi was teaching the people sat down nobody would stand and be listening to a rabbi so this is the year that you will sit down you must have a passion in your heart to learn some of you even when you come out to pray the way you are praying we know you are far from god you cannot even construct a good spiritual sentence you just mix everything you just know that this is you know how politicians talk when they come on stage they try to act like they know god but their addictions betray them one of the common thing in any culture is their language hallelujah number two you must have a resolve you must have a determination to apply and live by the revealed truth no matter the price and no matter the temporary challenge you must have a resolve a determination to apply and live by the revealed truths these truths that you are hearing it will not profit you please those outside make sure you are listening if you cannot write anything you can come and meet the media people and they'll give you our messages are free after the meeting apply the things it's not just what you know but what you know what you understand and apply hallelujah apply the truth no matter the price no matter the challenge number three you must have a resolve to place god and his agenda this year above every other pursuit above every other quest and above every other ambition you cannot give god second place this year hallelujah so it's a time for you to go back and search what have you put above god there are many of us you love god you are born again but for sure god is not number one you must make him above all the true proof of love and passion is commitment you cannot claim to love a man or a thing and not be committed doggedly committed and let me use the opportunity to encourage you join a department there are many of you that have been sitting here for one year two years you just come and find the place clean and you just start laughing it's not good you don't know how the chairs are clean you don't know who swept what you don't know where they had the rehearsals and and you are full of potential and grace there is a dimension that only kingdom service can take you into this should be the year many of us are afraid of commitment because we know we don't want to be serious with god you don't want a situation where people will probe your life there are many departments make yourself available hallelujah make yourself available Huh? so just coming to sit inside and sit outside immediately they finish the grace you and your friend you just run away serve the lord with diligence hallelujah number what now four okay just two more resolve to see the glory of god revealed in every area of your life make up your mind that this year I'm not going to celebrate God in one aspect of my life and then have another aspect staring at me. That means you must go and write all the areas of your life. I have a series on prosperity coming, so I'm going to teach on that. But let me give you a preview that there are five areas of your life that you must experience prosperity. The word prosperity comes from the word prosper. It means to do well. First is spiritual prosperity second is mental prosperity if you're a billionaire and you are mad you are not that's that's it doesn't make sense is that true number three is your health number four is your finances and number five is your relationships these five areas you must contend and tell god this year i must have rest round about the glory of the lord must be revealed in every one of these areas five resolve to enforce order in every area of your life this is very important many of us are so disorganized this is the year you will grow up in jesus name disorganized in every area of our lives this is the year you bring yourself into a level of decorum have order hallelujah 
one proof of excellence is order when everything is done decently when everything is done in order order means efficient management of your time your opportunities your resources bring your life under divine order no wasting of time no wasting of resources no wasting of opportunities you must bring your life under divine order hallelujah and finally you must make a determination to spend time with god this year in worship in prayer let seven days not pass let a week not pass that you will not dedicate at least a day in prayer and fasting those who built us spiritually did not teach us that prayer and fasting are part of the tools for efficient spiritual growth so every time we do it a lot of people just say oh, okay let's fast for seven days or 21 days or 30 days or 40 days or 100 days or 200 days and then after that the people now say god i've given you your own share of the year leave the other one for me no fasting must be part of your life at least once in a year or once in a week sorry thursdays are a good time to fast can fast on thursdays prepare yourself if you can't fast full day at least fast half day quality half day quality half day don't wake up by 10 and, and pray by it. see you remember the resolutions we are making some of you are already laughing this is the year when you will be serious with god if you want true spiritual power spend time with god in fasting don't let anybody tell you the era of fasting is over and so on and so forth no no thursdays for instance 6 to 12 6 to 2 6 to 4 6 to 6 as god grants you the ability very soon it will become part of your life and then you will see the enormous spiritual capacity he gave unto one five unto one two unto one one not according to their prayer request according to their ability the capacity they gave him determined what he gave them when the man with five increased capacity he sees it from the person with one and added to him if you enlarge when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing hallelujah praise the lord our priority this year as a ministry will be to build to equip and empower god's people even through these meetings we will keep on doing what we are doing the hand of god is here by the grace of god we trust that this year god will use this ministry in a very mighty way hallelujah that every week will be a time of an unveiling of deep truths applicable revelations that you will see transformation in your life i was praying to god and i was i think i was discussing with the welfare i said this year by the grace of god i plan i i, I don't know I, I let me not implicate myself here but i pray that god will help me hallelujah i want to make sure that as much as possible every friday i'm around you see because my primary assignment is not to the nations around my primary assignment is to you first if you are not well fed and i'm around making everybody saying joshua selman koinonia and my own people are dying here reminds me of some of our parents isn't it we'll be dying at home and they are donating money in in foundations and and charities which is good but make sure your own people are well fed you can even add that as part of your goals this year that you will not do anything to anybody outside your family except god instructs that you have not done to the people around hallelujah if you buy chicken for other people then it means that there's chicken in your house if god gives you an instruction it's okay but when you just get up and starve the people in your house to feed other people it doesn't make sense hallelujah praise the lord we trust God that we will experience healings, deliverance, and restoration and breakthroughs even through the power of the Holy Spirit. We really want to take advantage of our counselings, our Monday counselings. From this night, officially, we've resumed work. Our counselling, we want to dedicate time to minister to the people. Our Friday programs, Koinonia, 
school of ministry uh, more announcements will come on that but we plan to take the school of ministry very very serious it's a special time we have to train and build our students our external ministration media ministry and so on and so forth we are doing a lot uh, in koinonia this year and as other instructions come by we will comply accordingly hallelujah say after me this is my year of light it's my year of dominion. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Rise up on your feet. We're going to take some quality time to pray. This is how to establish the prophetic word. We're not rounding up. We're praying. Hallelujah. I want us to take some time to pray. It says, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy that you war a good warfare what does it mean to war a good warfare in prayer to say lord i receive this must be part of my life hallelujah are you ready to pray please i want you to pray instrumentalist i hope you're ready we are going to pray very very seriously very seriously lift your voice and begin to thank him for the prophetic word say yeah of light and dominion begin to bless him thank you for the word oh god I believe the word. I believe the word. I believe the word. I believe the word. Make sure you are praying. Outside, everywhere, make sure you are praying. This is between you and God. You are making the word real to you. Lord, is my year of light, my year of insight. Increased insight. Rekete koshota baka pregere balarabash. Sheka baka tabalarabash. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word. I believe the word. I will see it manifest in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray supernatural insight into scripture. Say, Lord, open my eyes this year. Lift your voice and pray. Open my eyes, oh God. Show me hidden mysteries. Let there be an unfailing, a revelation of deep kingdom mysteries, deep kingdom principles. That are responsible for victory, for health, for prosperity. That will empower me to be an ambassador indeed. Open my eyes. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching the inward parts of the belly. Open our eyes, O oh God. That we may behold wondrous things out of your law. Rekoto sekete kedeba, man prosko proskele ba kaya da bana daba. Give me revelation. Pray. Paul said, "For this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He may grant unto you the spirit of revelation and understanding, the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light, that He may know." That she may know, pray, open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes, oh God. Hallelujah. Insight. That you will just pick up your Bible and God will show you something. That will set you on your feet. It will show you something. That will open you up to a, another world of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Two years or three years ago. One time I was praying. And the Lord showed me a vision. And that thing changed my life forever. I saw. Like a big. Like an ancient door. And when I looked at it very well. I found out that there were small, small doors that made up that big door. 
And when I came closer, it, it was like they zoomed me. And when I came, I found out that on every of those small, small doors, there were scriptures written on it. And the Lord told me that whatever scripture that truly enters you, that door is open unto you. That means what is possible for Sam uh, may not be possible for Folake. Are you seeing that? The difference is that the light you are seeing is not sufficient to open that door. But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. No man can shut it. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray for understanding. It's not enough to have insight. Listen, listen. Take this prayer point seriously. You are going to say, Lord, all the principles that are responsible for the various areas of lifting, show me how they work. Show me how they work. Lift your voice and pray. Show me the keys of wealth, oh God. Show me how to operate it. Show me the keys of the anointing. Show me how to access the fountains of spiritual power. Show me the keys of holiness. Show me the keys of deliverance. Show me the keys that will make me command power even in my family. Make sure you are praying, understanding, and with all you're getting, get understanding. Know how it works. Know how it works. It's not enough to have keys. Know how to apply it for maximum results. Pray. Pray. Show me, oh God, the keys. Show me how to operate it. The Bible says they know not. Neither do they understand. And so they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. Show me I tell you, many of you as you are praying right now, God will begin to give you understanding. Show me the mystery behind the operations of wealth. Show me the mystery behind the operations of grace. Show me the mystery. What makes the spirit of God become so real to a man? Show me the secret of church growth. The secret of increase. The secret of influence. The secret of leadership, the secret of power, the secret of abundance. Show me, oh God, the mystery of doing business in deep waters of the spirit. Show me, show me, teach me, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Can we project that? Let's see. I hope I'm right. Lipo Shatakata Pratika Labo Siprianda. Everybody read it. You are going to pray and say, Lord, this year, you are going to direct me and my life will experience increase only. He said, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. I can teach you how to do it and lead you in the way that you should go. Lift your voice and pray. Rekoto Sekata. Divine direction. Let the stars shine. Let the morning stars shine, oh God. Lead me to the place of destiny. Lead me to the next level. I'm tired of confusion. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Go ahead and pray. Maritally, give me direction, oh God. I cry for direction. Financially, 
give me direction, O oh God. Academically, lead me, O oh God. Let the star arise and let me follow the star. In terms of my career, lead me, O oh God. Rekoto Seketa. Lead me. Show me in my ministry. Show me, O oh God. Show me. Give me direction. Pray. Illumination. By light. I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit and lead you. Show me. Show me. Show me, O oh God. Where you want me to be. What you want me to do. Who you want me to connect with. Show me, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. You are going to pray and say, Lord, let a new dimension of unction, let a new dimension of power man to my life. This year, Lord, I want to move in the anointing in a level of grace. He said, and he measured a thousand cubits. Lift your voice and pray. A thousand cubits. And he was to my ankle. For no man can do these things except God be with him. Pray. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. And you will anoint me with fresh oil. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God, had anointed you. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Pray. Lord, I'm moving in the anointing. Pray. This is the year you do business with the anointing. You do your job with the anointing. You minister with the anointing. You conduct your activities under the influence of a heavy unction. He says you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Pray. Pray. Worship team, pray. We minister with the anointing. Media, pray. The anointing takes us to another level. Pray, Aban, pray. We are praying with the anointing. Regoto Seketa. Koinonia, pray. This is our year of the anointing. Inside and outside. No matter how far you are. Let that anointing take you. Walk in signs, wonders, miracles. Let the sick be healed through your life. Let breakthroughs, let chains be broken. Let lives be delivered and restored. Let sinners be saved. Let the anointing make you a savior. Let the anointing make you a deliverer. Hallelujah. 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 Two more prayer points and we're done. Please, everybody, participate. We're establishing the prophetic word right now. Hallelujah. Listen. This next prayer point is very important. You're going to pray. Listen. The Bible says, Arise. It says, Shine. And the Bible says in Daniel, I believe 12 or 22 or so, I can't remember verse 3. It says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heaven. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. Listen, you are going to pray. It's not a selfish prayer. Don't pray for your neighbor. You are praying for yourself. You are going to say, Lord, display, show what you have put in me this year. My God, let men see the hand of God. Go ahead and pray. Unveil it. Unlock it, oh God. In 2014, my year of light, 
I manifest I am a city to my family in my department in my faculty in my place of work in my place of business let there be a showing forth show forth oh God show forth prosperity through me show forth a healthy Christian through me show forth holiness through me show forth breakthrough through me let me become a portrait and a piece show forth manifest oh God manifest oh God hallelujah hallelujah listen listen there are many of us this is the year your destiny help us are supposed to see you hold on you are going to pray that that veil that has covered that grace of God in you that unction the Bible says there is this treasure there are many of you you have been relegated to the background this is the year this is the year say Lord arise in me come on pray Lord arise let men see you through me yes Lord yes Lord if you are looking for a vessel I'm available let me be an epitome of the anointing an epitome of wisdom an epitome of wealth and prosperity an epitome of leadership an epitome of power an epitome of revelation pray pray Make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, this prayer is so powerful. There are many of you that have business ideas, but nobody knows. It's an idea that can bless you and stop hunger in your family but nobody knows when light comes it exposes darkness let me show you a scripture Galatians 1 Galatians 1 let's just look at that one scripture Galatians 1 verse 23 and 24 Galatians 1 God wants to walk through you not for pride and arrogance are you getting me I'm not talking of the kind of lifting and influence that takes you to hell But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preached faith which once he destroyed. 24. Everybody read it. One to read. And what? How did they glorify God? That means when they saw what God did with my life and they said, Lord, is this what you meant when you said you can bless people? Is this what you meant when you said you can use people? Are you ready to pray this prayer again? Lift up your voice. Say, Lord, I'm available. I'm available. Make a spectacle out of my life. Lord, make a spectacle out of Koinonia in 2014. Dr. Sasso, let there be a display of the glory let the nation see we are a city on a hill. They glorified God in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray for yourself now and your family. And say, Lord, it's also my year of dominion. Listen, you're going to pray. And say, Lord, I don't just want to chorus this. It must be dominion. Dominion means absolute control. Are you listening to me? 
therefore pray that for you and your family whatever has mocked God to your face this is the year it must come under your feet lift your voice and pray dominion oh God kingdom authority pray is it finance is it a terminal disease is it lack of breakthrough is it sin your family members are not safe pray get angry in your spirit those outside are you praying those outside are you praying record to secretary total dominion no more fibroid this year no more getting sick and getting well no pray no more prosperity today and poverty tomorrow you will not be on fire today and backslide tomorrow no the part of the joss is as a shining light it shines brighter brighter hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord now you're going to pray for koinonia we're going to say lord take us to another level take us to another level another level of impact another level of prosperity pair yourselves into three pair yourselves into three those who are lying down or praying just leave them those who cannot stand just leave them I want us to pray seriously hallelujah you're going to say lord lift us up we are not just asking for fame we are asking for impact salvation transformation come on lift your hands and pray let this place become Bethel the place of bread Bethel the place of bread if you love this ministry pray the ministry is not Joshua Selman the ministry is you Lord a harvest of souls a harvest of souls a harvest of souls a harvest of souls transformation oh God drunkards will come here and become apostles prostitutes will come and become prophets your word is mighty and it prevails in our midst your word is mighty and it prevails in our midst this year we experience character we experience excellence at another dimension we experience wealth and prosperity as a ministry at another dimension revival oh god let there be a fire of revival that will spark from here and spread to the nations and spread to cities and spread to campuses and spread pray pray for our friday programs pray for the counselings pray for all our external ministrations pray pray for the miracle services lord let every service be a miracle service beginning from this one let every service be a miracle service let this place become a solution center let this place become a place of authentic miracles authentic signs wonders breakthroughs restoration let the sick come and be healed let blind eyes be healed let incurable diseases be cured let there be a mantle of healing of breakthrough 
of prosperity may men come here and have their spiritual life fired up fired up passion oh god passion oh god for the things of the spirit this is a place where we infect people with hunger with passion with fire for the things of the kingdom pray this is a place of love no discrimination no discrimination this is a place of love everyone is special everyone is honored we will not teach error in this place hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me we're almost rounding up listen please inside and outside everybody listen please hallelujah i want you to know that in 2014 you are first an ambassador of heaven second you are an ambassador of this ministry are you listening to me that the gentleman who came and testified that he went to preach I'm not the kind of people that does God of this, God of that. I don't have any. We teach kingdom. We give you a kingdom mindset. Are you listening to me? But because you belong to this structure, you must, there are certain, we have a culture. Are you listening to me? We have a culture. You can come as you are, but you do not remain as you are. Something should happen and change you. Hallelujah. We have core values in this place. Our first core value is love. That's why you don't see anybody. We don't say come and sit down because your father is the president or your father is the governor. We don't want to know. Where God grants us opportunity to know, we salute you and then that's all. Hallelujah. So you must contribute in letting the love of God. The first thing that should be seen in your life is love. Not power. Love. You can be anointed and not walk in love. That means this is the year that you maintain your words. The Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt. That it may minister grace. Make up your mind this year. No gossiping about people. No backbiting. No carrying news left, right and center. Your job is to love. If somebody does something, go and talk to him, not about him. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The love of God. He says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you raise the dead. When you have love one for another. Hallelujah. There is no doubt that you step on one another's toes. So you must, it must be a predefined thing in your heart that you're going to walk in love. Because the Bible says there remain these three, faith, hope, and love. He said the greatest is love. Hallelujah. So this is the spirit and the culture that you must have. Your conversations must speak love. When you are angry, keep quiet rather than saying nonsense. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that does not err, if a man err not in words, that man is a perfect man, able to burdle his tongue. Just say anything, anyhow. Number two, character. Everybody say character. There are many Christian circles where the men of God are just thinking of power. Let me tell you, anointing can take you far, but it's character that will sustain you. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you can see a ministry rise up. They are anointed and then they fall like a leaf because they lack the character. This must be the year you will contend to manifest a Christ-like life. You don't live a life, a dirty, polluted life somewhere and then the only place they just see you in church and people say, ah, ah, even you. Character. It must not be something you fake. It must be a revelation. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Character. Every, the entire scope of whatever character means to you. When you do something wrong, tell people I'm sorry. Don't say, Debbie, I'm older than you. When I graduated, you just entered secondary school. No. No. Have respect for people. Don't come with village and tribal and cultural mindsets. I'm from a royal family. In a village, I must sit down before others sit. Keep your, you have been called out of every tribe and tongue. Are you getting my point? 
Listen, let me tell you something. Many of us here are young people and we are, we are, this is a training ground. We are training you not just to be anointed people but to be leaders. So that when you go somewhere, you can speak aright. You have a culture. Don't speak anyhow. Hallelujah. Remember, you are representing Christ. Especially for as many of us outside. Speak like a believer. Always know that the Holy Spirit is in you. Number three, the anointing. You must contend and let the anointing find expression in your life. It's not enough for you to just come and be blessed. You are, are, are an extension of the ministry. Our job here is to equip you and release you with the power of the Holy Spirit. You should go back to your hostels, go back to your workplaces and legislate on behalf of the kingdom. Not to be jumping and shouting and saying, I'm anointed. Let everybody in this office bow to me. Demonstrate it. When there is breakthrough, when there is wisdom, when there is character. Hallelujah. Number four, this year, you must adopt excellence as a lifetime. Everybody say excellence. We must keep contending. It's one of the things I told the leaders. And we'll still talk more during our retreat. Hallelujah. Excellence. Excellence is not about an expensive life. Excellence is an organized life. Are you following me now? Excellence from your personal hygiene to everything about your life. There are some of us who are born again, but we are so dirty. You are so dirty. This is the one weakness. This is where the devil is cheating you. This year you must repent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't just laugh. excellence hallelujah your words your words you must pray this year those dirty godless films that keep putting satanic dictions you must get them out of your life because you are a man on a mission don't say anything and say this is the slang invoke this is a kingdom this is a culture hallelujah Jadel sang and said this is my culture you have a culture don't go ahead. They, they see you in, in, in the market and you are speaking as if, as if you, are, you are never born again. Even in your joke, joke the word. Speak the word. I'm saying this to you because many of you are emotional now. Immediately you step out of here, you almost want to do something. You just remember, ah. Don't do things because of men. Do it because God Almighty is watching you. But much more than that, that he desires to use you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Think before you talk. Don't just say everything. Even what does not concern you. This is how many people put themselves into trouble. You go and choke your mouth into people's businesses and enter their trouble too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's very, very important. So let this year be different. Say, I'm a light. Say it, I'm a light. No offense, no unforgiveness, no God forbid, no over my dead body. All those demonic languages, pack them and throw them outside. This is a new season. Even when, see, people will mock you, whether in your workplace or your department. Let them mock you until they see what you become. They are only mocking you because they are intimidated by the light that is shining. Hallelujah. When somebody talks against you, bless you. When they think you are coming to divorce them, you say, bless you. I heard what you said. I'm not happy, but I love you. I belong to a government. Are you following me now? Not the year of saying, let me meet with him and you will know. Him. I asked you from the beginning, can two walk together? So are you ready? See, this is it. If you are ready to walk with God, you will see his hand. But if you, are, if you don't see the hand of God this year, it's not God's fault. For me, I told God, I said, Lord, whatever it takes, I'm ready to walk with you. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you now. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it. I told God, I said, Lord, I'm more committed than ever before to serve your people. And I'm saying it before everyone. My, my primary assignment, listen, my primary assignment is you. You. 
whenever you talk of koinonia, think of yourself. Don't think of Joshua Selman or the leaders in the ministry. No. Hallelujah. Without you, we have no ministry. Hallelujah. And I pray to God. I said, Lord, I'm ready to make sure that all that you have put in me, let your people receive it. Hallelujah. Before we go and we are traveling around and blessing other people, and then you are hearing of the mighty things that God is doing with us in other places and you are wondering, oh Lord, I'm so close and I'm not receiving anything. I told God, I said, Lord, if I never go for any ministration, this is why we are opening up the doors for counseling and all of, all of these avenues. We are restructuring the leadership to allow us to have access. In fact, I was talking with somebody and my heart was bleeding. I said, this year I will make sure I have time for the workers. There are many times that many of you want to see me, but because of how busy we are, I told myself, I said, look, not only will I be a leader or have an apostolic ministry, this year I want to be a father. I don't want people sitting down and dying and then we are there. Let me tell you, even if the whole Nigeria is talking about us and you are not getting blessed, we have failed. This is what people like Joseph Suleiman will call public success and private failure. Are you getting my point? Even if they say this ministry is not being impactful, if you are being blessed, we are fulfilled because you are our primary assignment. And so I'm telling you again on behalf of myself and the leadership of this ministry, we are committed. We will keep fasting. We will keep praying until you become all that God has destined for you to be. Even before anybody. So please and please, I want you to relax and know that you are not, all of you, I'm speaking to everybody, even those outside. We don't have second class citizens in Koinonia. Are you listening to me? We don't have favorites. No. We love people based on our assignment. It will have to make us interact with more people than others. But let me tell you something. Everybody in this ministry has a right to be heard, has a right to see me. I'm not one superman in myself somewhere. Are you following me now? Because I know that I need to say this because many of you may have been feeling, I know that there are some of you, I remember one day a lady tried calling me and I just woke up in the night and I decided that the next day I was going to call her. When I picked, I called her, this lady shouted, she could not believe she dropped the phone. You understand? She was surprised. Her boss, I think she was telling her mother. For many of you, that's nice. You feel like a celebrity based on God's standard. That is, that is very bad of a leader. I can't promise seeing everybody where you want. Don't wake me when I'm sleeping because I made a commitment to help. I still have my sense, all right? I won't pick your call. Praise God. But then I'm saying there is a system. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I've made up my mind that we will have special counseling sessions for the workers. Special, just the workers, one by one by one. One by one. You see, everybody pray with you. If you are not a worker, these are some of the things you are missing. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are privileges that our leaders must receive. For instance, the heads of departments cannot book for counseling. It's an insult. Why will my leaders book for counseling to come and see me? You see that? So don't be offended if you have to book for counseling. I promise you we'll stay as long as possible to meet your needs. Are you following me now? And some of your family members, if you try to call me and I don't pick, by God's grace we are going to announce, we are strategizing. In fact, there are a few new departments we are creating to make sure that we meet the needs of everybody. That even if it's a text you send, you will be responded to. So just cooperate with us. We are improving. This year will be better than last year in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. You too, you must be ready to cooperate. Look at me. I've said my own part. What I'm committed to do to you, you must be committed. Your own part of commitment is don't frustrate our sacrifice. Receive what we are teaching. Let it not enter one ear and go out there. Put it to work. Hallelujah. And be evangelist. Say, do the work of an evangelist. Invite people, not just people who are not serious, people who really, 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 really need help and need God. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for 2014. Please make sure you lift your hands, especially those outside I'm watching. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. I bless you with the presence of God. I bless you with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you that even as you've begun in this space, you will sustain this space to the end of the year. I rebuke death. We will not mourn the death of anybody this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, any covenant that anyone has with death, anywhere they have said they must bury you this year, we cancel that report now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the scepter of dominion come upon your hand. That as you leave this place, you will begin to reproduce what you are seeing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the doors of wealth be opened unto you. Let the doors of influence be opened up to you. I pray that this year, your prayer life will enter another dimension. Your word life will enter another dimension. I pray that the spirit of true holiness will come upon you this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the Lord will make your feet like hinds feet that you will run and overtake everyone that has gone ahead of you i pray for you that before you pray this year before you even make mention of it may the lord answer you may the lord hear you in the day of trouble i pray for your businesses i command them to prosper i command them to flourish in the name of jesus May the Lord grant you the desires of your heart. I pray that the anointings and the graces God has put upon this ministry, let them find expression in your life. Everywhere you go this year, you are favored. You are favored, favored with God, favored with men. In the name of Jesus, all those who have planned to put you down, they are the ones who will celebrate your lifting this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command that you are preserved. You enjoy the ministry of angels. And I pray for you that this gift of God that is in you, that not even you will be able to hide it this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let those who need what you carry look for you. You will not look for them this year. I compel them to look for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, May the mighty hand of God go with you. I pray for you wisdom. Exams is starting when? On Monday. Lift your hands. I pray. Whether you are writing exams or not, lift your hands. Whether you are a student or not, you can connect for people. It's a corporate anointing here. I pray for you. Especially for final year students. Any power that says you must come back to this school, we cancel it right now. For those of you who need the mercy of God to graduate, we command that mercy right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every lecturer that has vowed to keep you must let you go this time around. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you supernatural intelligence. Let a mantle of intelligence come upon you. I prophesy upon you, pursue, overtake, recover all everything though some of you are trusting god to enter two two to enter two one and this is the last exam that will determine it i pray like samson may the hand of god come upon you and may you do wonders i bless your exams this is the best exam you have ever written in the name of jesus your papers will not be missing in the name of jesus and for those still trusting God for admission, it's not over. I hope you know. I prophesy that the, the God on the third day, he said, if any man thirst, let him come. There are some of you who have concluded you did not see your name. I pray that may the Lord God, the one who is never too late, visit you in this 2014. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Let the beauty and the glory of God arise in you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to invite all those very quickly. A few minutes and we'll be out. Please keep standing. I know you've tried. Keep standing, please. Let's honor those who are coming. There are many of you outside and a number of you inside who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Some of you, this is your first night. Some of you are the students who got admission. You just came excited. Please listen. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's my honor to invite you tonight to tell you that you can stop the struggle. There is a better life. There is a higher life. He said, I am come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. Therefore, right now, I want to invite as many who want to give their hearts to the Lord. You are saying, help me tonight. I want to be reconnected to God. Or some of you who have made that decision before, but you know that you have derailed and you want the Lord to begin a new experience with you tonight. As I count one to five, I want you to, don't be ashamed outside and inside. I want you to come and stand right here and I'll lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. One, God bless you. God bless you. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for anybody to come. Inside, outside, God bless you. Don't sit back. It's time to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Don't struggle with him. Bless you. Keep clapping. Two. I believe there are more people coming. For those coming, please hurry up outside. Don't let your friends stop you. This is the beginning, especially if this is your first time of being here or coming to Zaria. Don't be ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed about. You want to give your heart to Jesus or to dedicate your life. Three. I perceive there are still a number of people outside. Please, let's keep clapping for them as they come. I perceive there are a number of people outside. The Lord is speaking to you. Don't argue with him. Leave your friends. This is the beginning of the best days of your life. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for all of you who have come. I really appreciate your coming. This is the beginning of mighty times in your life in Jesus' name. Lift your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you shed your blood for me. Today, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I declare that I receive eternal life into my spirit I'm a child of God I'm saved my name is in the Lamb's book of life from today I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life I denounce sin and Satan in the name of Jesus let me pray for you Father thank you for these ones that you have brought bless them, honor them let this be the beginning of mighty transformations in their lives. They will never remain the same. Use them for your glory. Spirit of God, I commit them into your hands. Build them. Make mighty ambassadors out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for making this decision. Please just follow the lady. The lady waving her hands. She's smiling at you. Just follow. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time inside and outside. Please run like a champion that you are and come out. We love you. We want to welcome you and pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody, quickly, quickly, please. Those outside, you're worshiping with us. If there's anybody seated who is worshiping with us for the first time, please ask them to come out. God bless you, sister. Any other person? If you're coming from outside, please hurry up. God bless you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God bless you. We understand some of you are 100-level students. Congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Keep coming. Clap for them. 
They clap for you when you came. Clap for them. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to see these faces. Some of you are definitely new. New to Zaria, new to Koinonia. We have a way of knowing. Praise God. It's, it's one of the gifts of the Spirit. We always know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is it not amazing that with the millions of people in this city, when you see new faces, you know. Somehow, you just know that it's good to have every one of you. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. Thank you for coming. You are very special to us, and we appreciate you. I think we'll soon find, well, I don't want to say we'll find a song. You people, uh, there are some things I don't trust you on, so you people should not embarrass me. Well done. This is Koinonia. <laughs> we love ourselves, and um, this is a piece of what we do here. We pray that God will increase you. Hallelujah. If we bless you, you are blessed, and we want to bless you right now. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and let's prophesy. Thank you, Father, for bringing them. They are special. You will make mighty men and women out of them. Thank you, because they will excel in their academics, in their career, in their endeavors. Thank you because um, you're putting a passion for the things of the Spirit in them. Whatever challenge you came here with, we command that it melts away. And we declare in the name of Jesus that this is the beginning of mighty things in your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you once again for coming. Please, we request that you follow. Um... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.